uh, all organizations have mission statements. In, in case of, uh, of co-ops, we have uh, end statements. And uh, it takes a lot of work to um, make those things happen. Uh, so we're trying to figure out what we want in the world, for whom, at what cost. And so it, a lot of things vary depending on the organization is how do you accomplish things. So if you have an organization that has maybe very clear goals over here, but you have people going in different directions, so you don't have good alignment, um, you actually might end up reaching those goals, but it might take you a really long time to reach those. And then you have organizations where um, you have different goals. And sometimes they are conflicting goals. And it's very hard to get alignment um, if you have an organization like this. And then there's organizations that are called uh, metanoic. Metanoic organizations have very clear goals. They also have everybody working together and going in the same direction and understanding where they're headed. And so for us, that would be the goals are the, the ends. And then you have the staff, and you have uh, the GM, and the owners, and the board. And everybody is clear on where we're going and, and, and how we're going to get there. And when you have a metanoic organization, um, a lot of interesting things happen. Um, you have a clear uh, sense of purpose and vision. You have alignment around that vision. You have persistent focus on organizational design. So organizational design, in my mind, is, are those policies and procedures that you have that are efficient and effective, so both on the board level and, and on the uh, operations level. And then you also have a, uh, a balance of wisdom and knowledge, uh, reasoning, and intuition. So we know about uh, wisdom and knowledge. We get that from talking with other people, by doing pilot studies, by reading things, by talking with our CDS consultant. Um, and our reasoning skills, we, we all have good reasoning skills, right? And collectively, we have even better reasoning skills. Uh, intuition sometimes gets a short rift in my mind. And to me, intuition is sort of the accumulation of all the knowledge that you have, all the experience that you have. And, and really, it's something that's right in here. And, and I don't think that we should discount intuition as, uh, as a factor in, in helping us to make decisions. So how does this re relate to leadership? I think it sets the tone. Uh, it sets the stage for developing leadership. And you know that in decision making, it's imperfect. And the more people that we involve with more ideas and more perspectives, the better uh, experiences uh, we can share and the better the decisions that we make. So like the co-op uh, saying stronger together, I think that we make better decisions together also. Leadership development on a co-op board is an ongoing effort. The more we share our leadership opportunities and mentor new directors, the stronger our boards are and the stronger our co-ops are, not only now, but also in the future. The Hendersonville Community Co-op has been around for about 35 years. Uh, about 2007 or so, we started talking about expanding. We studied it for a while, and we decided we weren't ready yet. We had a downturn in the economy. So we weren't ready. We continue to work on those systems to get the right people on the board, to get the right people in our store, to get our POS system running well. And then at, at some point, we decided, well, you know, I think we need to learn about raising money. So we learned about raising money and how we could do that. And then in about 2010, we said, yes, we're going to go ahead and go with this. And how are we going to do that? to do that and involve uh, our owners. Um, so we had used experts. We had input from all of our owners as far as what they wanted to see 
in the new store, and the list was this long, what they wanted to see. Um, and we decided that the way for us to finance our, uh, our co-op was to sell shares of preferred stock. So we got our email and our uh, phone list uh, updated. We started making calls. And that involved a lot of people. We got about 280 uh, owners that uh, be eventually became investors. But we wanted to involve everybody. And so in those phone calls, we not only asked them if they could invest, we gave them other ways that they could support the effort. And so we asked them for ideas on people that we should be contacting and talking about as far as investing. We uh, asked them if they wanted to make some phone calls. We asked people to do what we call vesting up, and that's adding to your common share until you're vested. Uh, and that was a big hit. Um, but just, you know, there's some people that couldn't do any of that. But we just wanted to thank them for their support uh, over the years that we've been in business. And so by doing that, we really involved everybody in the, in the process. So we had a vision for something that's very special. Doesn't happen a lot, probably won't happen again in my lifetime. Uh, it created lots of excitement and support. And as a result, we were able to buy the property and build a store. And we opened about a, a year ago. Um, at this time. And so far, our sales uh, are above projections. We're at about 2,800 uh, families that collectively own the business. But as Michael Healy's told us, the job, as far as the expansion for the board, is finished. We still need to monitor the financials and, and look at that. But now, really, our work as leaders and as a board is to keep that momentum going to create, create support and enthusiasm for the next chapter in our collective uh, uh, business that we have, and also to have consistent leadership necessary, necessary to align people around that vision. And so that's the board perspective. Thank you. <laughs>